Hello and welcome to today's video uh, for Libre. and today we will be talking about global parameters, right? Uh, we'll talk about how to make the file, how to connect it to parts uh, and all of that, but uh, before all of that, let's uh, make like a cooking show and say, here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, so this is an assembly of uh, an engine, or it's supposed to be of an engine. Uh, you know, no part is accurately designed, but uh, they are based loosely on uh, real parts. Okay, and uh, I have also made a global parameters file for it. And in that global parameters file, I've made two new global parameters. One is the stroke of that engine. The other one is the stud count. Okay, and I have a little comment here that the stroke should be between 40 and 60. Okay, so let's play with these values and see uh, what they actually do. So let's give it a stroke. Uh, uh, by the way, let me tell you how we know that things have changed. The fin count here is parametric. So if we increase the stroke and the cylinder becomes longer, uh, you might see an extra um, fin on the cylinder body. Right? Also, uh, here you see some formed threads. These have been created by a Boolean operation. Um, I have created the Boolean tab with the same way and methodology I created the Boolean threading die I show in my other video. And of course the Boolean tab creates female threads, the Boolean threading die creates male threads. Okay, But uh, what you might not know is that you cannot use a part um, the variables from the equation editor inside the Boolean environment, right? The Boolean environment gets a set of variables uh, on its own. So the only way to have a pattern, because this is a pattern basically, inside the Boolean environment linked to a value that you can then change and manipulate is through the global parameters file. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, as we increase the stroke, you will see this crank thing moving away from this journal, of course, because you need the longer stroke. And you will see that every time we go around, the piston will come back to the exact same position, indicating that the connecting rod has shortened as we increase um, our stroke. So let's go and uh, take a look at all that. So let's change this to 52.7. Let's say I want five studs. Okay. Um, because I, I have opened only my assembly, uh, it'll work more reliably if I first save and then update. Okay, I update, I see the little circle, and there we go. And you see now that we have, first of all, we have an extra fin, because now we have five. The crank pin has moved quite a bit away from the journal, so we have quite a bit more stroke, um, 12.7 uh, millimeters to be precise, half an inch more, right? And if we go around, you will see that it comes back to the exact same location, which means that the connecting rod has also shortened. Um, let's see, how many studs did I want? Five. Okay, let's let's change that to three. Okay. Enter, we save, and we update our designs. Can we update? Yeah, we should have. So let's go back now. Nothing's changed apart from the fact that we have three studs. Not only do we have three studs, we have three bumps of extra material for the stud, right? Now, of course, in a normal air cool, material thickness is your enemy. So this would have been very carefully engineered, but this is not. And we also have only three Boolean formed threads at the bottom here. Okay? So it worked. Um, and uh, yeah, so you see that with uh, a single change of the uh, parameters, I made uh, the appropriate changes to a number of parts at the same time. Right? Okay, so that's uh, all well and good, but let's make something from scratch and uh, see how that works. Um, okay, so 
let's see what are we going to do let's start on the zx plane so i'll make a circle here and that'll be 25 millimeters i want it horizontal with the origin and i want this distance to be 350 millimeters divided by two so d1 is my diameter d2 is my distance that is sketch one now sketch two sketch two is also going to be on the zx plane uh, actually i'm doing something now that i don't normally do which is create layout sketches but you know um everything uh, everything is useful for for some uh, application okay um now i want to sketch on the xy uh, sorry xy plane there we go and uh, i'm going to project these two sketches in okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a semicircle above all right okay now on the inside i want to be a bit more creative but, uh, you will see what i'm doing here right uh, again i am being very very cheeky okay so uh, i want to make these reference figures and i want to say that this angle is 45 degrees and then i want to make these two reference lines i want to say that this angle is 15 degrees okay oh okay and then i'm going to use my neat and trained trick and say that okay well no, i don't need to do i need to yeah i'm going to use it and say that i'm defining a linear segment here and i'm saying that this is always a uh, particular bisector so if i change this to 20 yeah, so that works the way i want it to work okay um, let's also create a mirror line here. These are all things I don't recommend people doing, right? But I am doing them now. And this is going to be really, really fun. And now I'm going to do yet another thing that I don't recommend people doing. Uh, filleting in Sketch. I'm going to fill these. Yeah, 20 millimeters is fine. Okay. So let's fill this again in Sketch. Okay, let's... Yeah, 20 hours. Now I'm going to make the ends of this uh, arc horizontal with each other. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to make this tangent to that. Okay, I think, yeah, yeah, that works as expected. So what do we want to do now? Uh, we want it to bulge out a bit, so I guess less, yeah. Yeah, less is, uh, less works. But these two lines now. Oh, yeah, okay, so let's make these. Okay, now we're fully defined. That's cool. 30, at least 30 degrees. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Ah, uh, 25. Yeah, I like the shape. So now I'm going to mirror all of these sketch entities around this axis, which means I should be getting a complete... Uh, and continuous sketch. Oh, did I, did I do it all in the same sketch again? I did, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Okay, no matter. I will show you a trick when you want to split one sketch into two. Right, so now I'm going to select all these sketch entities and turn them into a reference geometry. Okay, uh, I missed this one. And I missed this one. Okay. So I'll hit OK, right? And now I'll make another sketch in the same plane, project this one, create reference figures. I want to project the reference figures as well. Okay, and now. I will convert back to normal figures, everything that I need for the second sketch. Uh, again, this, this video is full of things that I don't recommend you do, but there we go. But we've we lost a few of them. So I make this, and I also make this, and I also make this. Okay. So another thing that we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to create another, yet another sketch in the XY plane. So let's project sketch one, but I want to maintain the association type, but I don't want reference figures. And I'm going to make the yeah, arc. And uh, yeah, this needs to be a semicircle. Oh, and this needs to be a reference figure. I think uh, I'm good. I think I'm good to go. So let's uh, start lofting now. I want to select these two uh, sketches as the cross sections. And of course, it doesn't do anything because you cannot loft in the same plane, right? It work. And now I'm going to tell it that I'm going to use local guides, right? Not not uh, global, not center line, not tangent, local guides. That way you can use more than one. So my local guides are going to be this sketch and this sketch. <laughs> can you tell what I'm adding at? Okay, and now I'm going to oh, uh, go to the ZX plane again. Right. So you should, okay, so I'm going to project this edge. Ah, I need that to be actual geometry, not reference. Okay, that's why I did that. So yeah, this is going to be my path. Okay. Ah, I bet, I bet you, you know where this is going. Okay, now we're going to uh, define a plane. That's, I don't know, 14 millimeters away from that. 16, 75. There you go. We're going to go for a circle there, and that circle is going to be 80 is too small, 120. Probably right. Then it's going to have a second circle on the inside of 16. Okay. Hmm, how much? Let's say 8 millimeters. Yeah, that kind of works actually. Let's see. There you go. Guys, we might be actually getting somewhere. I'll do a bit of saying that this is going to go 10 millimeters inwards. Okay, well, now I have a path to create a plane. I'm going to do 100%. I'll sketch here. 
just keep going here. Like that. And this is going to be right there. So I'll make another plane at the end here. Okay, and that is going to be another rectangle. Eight millimeters again. This time this is going to be 17. That's a match, let's say 60. No, oh, this is too steep. Okay. I need to fill it this. I think it might work. So we lost. We lost these two profiles, and this is our center line. Okay, and now we made it. Yes. That's this. Okay, okay, that works. Let's go and get these two faces face color. This is getting better and better. Nice large fillets. And now, finally, I want a whole culture. Oh, sorry, not a sketch. I'm going to do a hole. So, this needs to be 6.9. This needs to be 3.5. This needs to be 2. Oh, plug it in there. Okay. What I need there is 90. Yeah, 45. Let's see your pattern. Eight of these. No, six. And M3 is too small. Let's go for M5. Six and three. Five and five. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Okay. Ah. <laughs> so, what we've got here is a racing steering wheel. Rally inspired because it only has two arms. Let's see that as a rally steering wheel. Okay. That's very interesting, actually. Okay, let's uh, go make an assembly with it. And then, so the way you uh, constrain flathead screws is you select one cone and the other, okay? And it creates a fastener. By constraining them, that's what you want. So that's it. We're done. Then I'll do a circular pattern with six of these and this is the center. Why am I getting only four? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> six of these. Okay, well, let's go. Um, let's edit this here and make it black. Okay, okay, so this is our assembly. Okay, now what we're going to do with the global parameters is we will uh, control both the circular pattern inside the part and the circular pattern inside the assembly. So we will be modifying a part and an assembly at the same time. So let's make a global parameters file. Let's create a new. Reading params. I'll just make a single variable which is going to be bold count. Let's say six. Yeah. Okay, that's in here. And now let's edit the steering wheel part. Now let's connect it. Steering parameters. Okay, now. So now we'll go into these feature pattern uh, yeah, here and we'll find our global parameter, bulk count. Okay. And that's it basically. And then we'll come in here in this circular parameter and we'll also get it going with bulk count. Okay. Let's save everything. Let's generate. Let's open our steering parameters file. And let's say that this now needs three bolts. Enter, save, and we update. Only three bolts. Uh, that's that's got some Italian vibes there, right there, right? Uh, steering wheel held by only three M5 bolts. The screams a barf. Screams it. So, yeah. There you go. That's uh, something you can do with um, global parameters. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe. More videos like that heading your way. Uh, uh, also, hit the like button. And if you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. And I hope I'll see you.